passed 140 laws and bills that mandate police reform. In February, Illinois set into place a law that would require officers to be wearing a body cam at all times. Since then, 16 states have placed extreme restrictions on the use of neck restraints, finding it too aggressive for most circumstances. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a great weekend, and I hope you did something fun. Today, we're jumping straight in, and I want to start with police reform. This past year has been turbulent for many people. And in this past year, we've seen a lot of anger and hate. A lot of that anger and hate has been fueled by videos popping up all over social media of some cop or some law enforcement official using excessive force. The latest victim among them being Dante Wright, a 21-year-old young man. Now, through all this, politicians are trying to make this better. They really are. They're passing police reform laws and condemning the use of excessive force. As these new laws take place, however, some are asking, are they enough? Really, are they? Since the killing of George Floyd last May, states all across the country have come together and passed 140 laws and bills that mandate police reform. In February, Illinois set into place a law that would require officers to be wearing a body cam at all times. The following month, New York made it much easier for its citizens to sue cops. It is commonly known that George Floyd died because he was placed in a neck restraint for too long. Since then, 16 states have placed extreme restrictions on the use of neck restraints, finding it too aggressive for most circumstances. On the note of the Derek Chauvin trial, the man accused of murdering George Floyd, this past week was week three. Over the past three weeks, the courts have heard from almost 50 witnesses and heard dozens of hours of testimony. That's pretty much it. We haven't heard from the jury yet, and it's unlikely we'll hear from them before the end of the week. Now for some other news. On Thursday, the country witnessed another mass shooting. Brandon Hall, the man who police say was allegedly the gunman, fatally shot eight people at a FedEx facility. Now, you might be wondering why I'm talking about all of this gun violence. The reason is because Joe Biden, the president, has denounced gun violence. He has also said that he is going to do something about it. He is going to put laws and restrictions to help end the gun epidemic. It remains to be seen what he ends up doing. Now for an update on the coronavirus. Throughout, this, throughout the country this past week, many, many, many students returned to in-person school. For many, it was their first time being on campus since lockdown started. For a few, it was even the first time off their property since March. Most found it to be quite a normal life, going to school, seeing your friends, etc. However, it was an updated normal life, like a version 2.0 of normal, with masks and social distancing. In terms of vaccinations, the country's day-to-day -day vaccination average was up quite a bit this week. This week, we are vaccinating nearly 3 million people per day. Regarding a teenage vaccine, there isn't any update on that since last week's episode, in which I said that there should be a vaccine for us within the next three, three and a half weeks. If you haven't watched that, go check it out. That'll be linked in the description. Anyways, that's it for tonight. Thanks for watching, everybody, and remember to subscribe and turn on notifications to know when I post a new video. Thank you.